Hey guys, so on Book Talk, this is a really hot topic and I just kind of wanted to share my opinion on it in a nice and constructive way um, in regards to still reading and, and liking work of problematic authors. A great example is J.K. Rowling's, as we know, her issues with regards to homophobia and how she feels about um, the trans community and the gay community. Despicable. Um, I really was never into Harry Potter, so, you know, me not reading those books was not a big deal. <laughs> um, I think that you have a right to read whatever you want to read. It's hard to find a non-controversial creative person, it seems like nowadays. It seems like everybody is wrapped into some type of hatredism, something. And it's just so hard to like find someone that is just at least accountable for their actions and apologetic and try to learn and grow from it, especially in the book world. But, you know, in your home, you can read whatever you want to. Go off. Read an author that is very misogynistic, very victim blame. I don't care. But the moment you come onto a social platform, and the moment that you share your opinions about that problematic author and how much you love that book, it's hard, especially you have that privilege to be able not to worry about the thoughts and the how an author perceives or even writes marginalized people um, because it doesn't really affect you. Like, oh, uh, you know, whatever. I like it, so deal with it. No, you can do that when you read it at home, but when you put it on public, um, platform like TikTok or Facebook or Twitter, you have to be open to having that conversation with marginalized people that it does affect, that we don't have the privilege of letting it just roll off our back because it hurts. I remember being a child and, you know, reading Mark Twain, you know, Huckleberry Finn, and them using the word nigger all the time. Yeah, you can enjoy it, but it doesn't affect you, but sitting in a room full of other children that are not like me, hearing that word over and over and over again, so nonchalantly, no, it hurts. And luckily, my English teacher, when I went to talk to them about it, we had a deep conversation with everyone in my class and had like, how's it make it, we were able to have great discussions that if I didn't bring up how I felt, would have never happened and it was awesome and it was critical thinking um, we were all able to put down our biases for a moment and actually step in other people's shoes I was able to hear from their side they were able to hear from my side and we were able to like you know what that is we're not gonna do that anymore because we understand reading out loud something like that is hurtful so just just be mindful of that. It's like no one's attacking you. Hell, people are being attacked in these books from marginalized groups. And you're basically just saying, you know, so sad. I'm going to like it. Get over it. No, you can't have your cake and eat it too. If you're going to put it on a public platform, you have to be willing to have those great, deep conversations of how it may hurt others that don't look, think, or practice religion like you. And that's okay. That's what critical thought is. That's what reading is. Reading brings up problems that you may not be able to solve and no one's asking you to solve them. But we are asking you to have empathy and to sit down of that uncomfortableness, of that otherness that you're not aware of like you know what yeah this fantasy is misogynistic yeah and point it out is great but just kind of take that chip off your shoulders like oh we gotta talk about it again yeah because you're on a public platform and people have a right to give you constructive criticism um i had an example recently where i had to kind of like take a seat back and um research and talk to people because I, I came across something that 
put a little fire in my belly. Um, as you know, I'm part of the blind community. I don't have any central vision. I do have peripheral. So sometimes I say blind, sometimes I say visually impaired. For me, they're interchangeable. Anyway, so there was a couple of TikToks um, bringing up Helen Keller and how she's racist. And that threw me back because she is one of my heroes. And this is another cool thing about critical thought. Just because I heard it on social media, I didn't automatically jump on the bad wagon like, oh my God, one of my blind heroes that I looked up to unknowingly is racist. The so far so that, you know, TikTok was trying to tie in this narrative. I did my research. I've been to blind schools. I've been to different organizations of Hella Keller funded. And I want to give the whole story because that's important, right? And having these difficult conversations. So ableism, you know, self-hatred, we all, we all know that, especially when you're a marginalized group. You, you seem to self-hate and, and do things um, in your own community that you're like, wait a minute, I'm part of this community, why I hate it so much? But anyway, in my research, you know, we I had those hard conversations with others that, yeah, you're right, she was from Alabama, and Sullivan was extremely hesitant to to go down to teach her because um, Helen Keller's dad was a Confederate general, had slaves, had that mentality. She grew up in that world. That's all she knew. So when Ann Sullivan went down there, uh, for some reason she decided to go even under those circumstances she brought her critical thinking her thoughts and was able to teach Helen Keller and have her recognize her privilege recognize what she grew up in was wrong and in some way also you know her having a disability she could empathize and understand even though she may have not she grew up in the in that culture of the Confederacy. When she got older, she became a partner with the NAACP organizations. She spoke about the importance of blind people of color and being helped and recognized. And she treated them just like how she wanted to be treated. So it was a really, really um, awesome conversation, eye-opening, because I had to sit down and accept, yes, that was part of one of my heroes' history, but thank God she was able to learn, process, understand her privilege, and do good in the world and leave the world with her legacy, supporting people of color, supporting people that are marginalized. She was so supportive, not only of black Americans with blindness, but black Americans period, but of the women's movement, anything that she felt people were being othered or oppressed. So that's the thing. I was uncomfortable in that conversation. I did my research, so when I had those conversations, I try not to be defensive. I tried to hear from the information they got. We came together, we're able to make it a whole holistic picture and understand. So you can like whatever problematic author that you wanna like, but just know when you bring it to a public platform, please have the decency and the courage, the courage to sit down on that aching feeling because you know it's there you can feel it when you read some of those words because some of those words especially when it comes to misogyny i don't care what color you are i don't care what religion you are i don't care what part of the world you come from if you're a woman and you read those words it hits you it hits you it does it makes you uncomfortable but have the courage to acknowledge it that yeah when you read that you felt the ick it's okay to feel the ick but you still enjoy the story but you got the icks a couple of times and talk about it that's what makes people become more educated with each other so that is my thoughts what are your guys positions on this um i've read my favorite genre is disturbing horror one, I make sure that those videos on Facebook are not child appropriate. Only somewhat adults can only adults can see it. So disturbing 
horror has misogyny, has violence, has you name it, it has it. The genre that I'm attracted to is a it's is problematic. End point period. So I'm very careful. I tell you the truth. Yep, wouldn't recommend. Don't read it. Don't pick it up. No, 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 no. <laughs> but I know. I know. Even one of my favorite, 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 favorite horse um, writers, Stephen King. I read it when I was really, not really young, but like in my te early teens. Problematic. Those, some of the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. Why was they even written? What was the purpose? Those are the questions that sh when you read something, even though they're your favorite author, you can hang that up because they're still a human being. You can still ask, what the hell were you thinking? What the fuck was the point to put that in the book? That's okay. I still love him as an author. I've read many of his books, but it's awesome to sit down and talk to other people and discuss and have like a a great robust dialogue and debate about the different points of different books and authors. There's some poets that I absolutely love. Problematic. But I'm okay to sit down when I come on the social platform. If I get any comments or comments of concern or awesome critique, yes. Feed my brain. Let's talk about it. I become very leery with anyone going, I want to read it, I want to express it, and I don't want to talk about anything negative about it. Hmm, you're very service level to me. Everything is just kind of on the top for you. You're scared to go deep and dive. And that's where the fun is. That's where, that's where the creativity and where we can do better. And future authors can learn and grow and do better. Or even the current authors that are problematic that are still alive can learn and grow and do better. That's what I love about words. You can perceive them so many different ways. But you can always make sure that if you do write something that hurts someone emotionally, that maybe you can write something else to build a bridge. All right, guys. Peace out.